Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangal. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. My name is Joseph Sangal, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Megan Hibbert. Are you fired up? I am. It is Monday, and it is December 6th. First Monday in the last yeah. month of the year. Can you believe it? I don't even know how Crazy. that happened. Yes. The last two years have been insane. They just really have been. <laughs> yes. Right? Like, we started 2020 about how awesome it was. We released a book called 2020 Money. We played on the year 2020 and 2020 Vision. We quickly forgot about it because of a worldwide pandemic. It was a different kind of vision. Woo. And it's been a challenge. And we are an episode. Yeah. In spite of it all, every week, every Monday, new episode of the podcast. Can you believe that? We've been yeah. able to achieve that. We're doing good. So what... What is this episode number? This is 179. Episode 179. 179 times we have sat down in front of microphones in various sets. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, what number set is this? Third or fourth, maybe? Because oh. I know we've shot in the little room in the old office. That room the was big room tiny. in the old office. Then, then in my your office, office in here. In the new office and now here. Yep. So if you're watching on YouTube, you've seen the progression of the studio, hopefully. This one is definitely better. the best. Yeah. yeah. And Megan says that. Because she designed it. And it is the best. So tell everybody what we're going to talk about. We're continuing kind of a topic we started on over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're talking about living generously. So during the month, during this month, we're going to be offering our generosity challenge to our fully funded life family. So it is a challenge that we're doing. It's free, which is wild. Um, and so a lot of times throughout the year we have challenges. Um, but the, what makes this one unique is it's a challenge that's open to everybody. So if you're on our email list, you've been getting emails about it. Um, if you are a member of Fully Funded Life, you know about it. But um, because of that and because it's the season of giving, we wanted to lead the way in making it free so that anybody can join. So that's a big point. Um, so anybody can join, and it's free. And then this week on um, the Monday Money Tip podcast, we're going to be discussing what it means to live generously. And we all aspire and desire to live generously, and we want it to be known that we want – we each want to be known um, that we're generous. And so during this season of giving, we thought it would be great to have a conversation about what that means. Yes, exactly. And before we dive into that and kind of build on the topic of what we've talked about in the last couple episodes, I am going to go to one of my favorite sections of the podcast. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. For today's current money events section. Did you like that? Bitcoin doo -doo -doo -doo, and cryptocurrency. So what is it? Do you like these sound effects? I like these sound effects. I'm still recovering from your current money yeah. events. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was very interesting. I liked it. Um, so what is Bitcoin? Do you know what it is? It, it, I, yes, but no. It's like all these numbers and the computer and it can like, you mine for them and then you can like achieve it and get it, but not everybody can. Do you have to have can. a pick and a shovel to mine? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what is it? So the question is, is it an asset like gold, silver property or is it a currency like the dollar? So it says currency in its name, cryptocurrency. Right. Bitcoin. Coin seems to be a currency. But or is it an asset? You know, when I when you have a silver coin or a gold coin, that is an asset. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is it an asset or is it a currency? And that matters a lot because that m determines how it's regulated and how governments treat it. 
they rarely have had something that is both an asset and a currency. Hmm. And so, you know, when you look at what Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is, I can't answer the question of what it is. It is a thing. It has security. And the so-called blockchain technology is really important and perhaps the most valuable thing of cryptocurrency as evidenced by the colonial pipeline hack this summer. If you live in the mid-Atlantic states and, you know, Georgia, South Carolina, where we are at, uh, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, all the Virginia, West Virginia, uh, we all are supplied our fuel from the colonial pipeline. And there was a hacker who sh shut it down and held out for $5 million ransom in Bitcoin. Wasn't that awesome? In like four for, days, for them, not all for everybody the gas else. was gone. <laughs> so, so hackers got paid off in it. And so I think it matters a lot. So um, because when you think about why did the hackers demand Bitcoin? Because it's not traceable. Mm -hmm. It allows anonymous transactions, which is why people like to use cash for other transactions so that they're not traceable. And so this is an issue that's going to have to be addressed by governments. Some governments are addressing it more aggressively in that China has banned the, the use of it. You can own it, but you can't trade it. And other governments have adopted it as their currency, like Venezuela, I believe it is, has, or El Salvador. I think El Salvador has, has just adopted it as their currency. So it's, a, it's something interesting to watch. And, you know, I own some Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, some Stellar Lumens. And if it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, I don't. Um, so it sounds like you're making so it So I, <laughs> I did. I made it all uh -huh. up. No, I do own them. I use Coinbase.com. And I'm not sure what will happen. So I don't have a significant amount of money in this so-called asset currency. But I do know this, that Jesus said, Matthew 6, 21, wherever my treasure is, my heart would also be there. So I put some money into some Bitcoin and some Dogecoin and some Stellar Lumens and some Ethereum. Why? So that my, a little piece of my heart will be attached to it so that I'll pay attention to it, which means I am learning and will learn more about it. And when I learn what it is, if it is a thing that I can learn about ever, well, then we'll have a conversation. We'll pour back. <laughs> and that's it for today's Coin Money Events section. That's how do you recover from that? <laughs> so in El Salvador, it's like their only currency or they added it like as an additional currency. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe you could Google it. Mm -hmm. That's our, that's our, uh, that's our producer talking. How much could Bitcoin could you sell for dollars right now? Bitcoin somewhere around $60,000. See, like in El Salvador, people can't afford that. Right, the government's <laughs> buying it. Oh, okay. As their reserve currency. Mm. It's really interesting. It is interesting. So, Google it. Questions. We'll see how it works out. Yeah. All right. So, that's it for our current money events section. <laughs> All right. Our success story today is from Keith and Kathy, who are members of Fully Funded Life. And Keith says, we've been working our way up the ladder for about five years. Joe came to Open Door Bible Church. Do you know where Open Door Bible Church is? It's up north. Mm, yeah, it is. In... Port Washington. Port Washington. Wisconsin. I, I was going to say Wisconsin. Yeah, that was right. a state that was ringing Love around it. in my head. Um, so we joined the small group after that, and we got on the same page to work um, the IWB and IN ladder. So we finished rung four in a few months, and we'll be on rung seven, wow, by summer 2022. I mean, the truth is, once you're done with rung four, yeah. five, six, or just boom, boom, yep. within a year. That's awesome. Yep. Congratulations to Keith and Kathy. I really love that. You know, they're, they, they've they taken five years to get to rung four and be done with rung four. And so they've had substantial challenges with debt, non-house, non-business debt. But, you know, perhaps they had student loans. I don't know what all type of debt they had. But the, the most important thing is they got on the same page. They got a map, a roadmap they could follow. And now... Here they are. They're going to run up to living the surplus lifestyle real fast. Yeah. A fully funded life. Mm. All right. So, um, and if you have a success story of how you have um, been able to come up the ladder or implemented one of the tips or tricks that we, that we have talked about, make sure to share it with us because we'd love to feature you on the podcast. Be awesome. Yeah. Okay. So our question for today is we're going to talk about living generously. So this month we've kind of been focusing on how to live generously, how to be intentional givers, 
um, how to be more intentional this season with it being um, December and Christmas. A lot of people are focused on like buying gifts, but it also can become like a really hard season for people when they're having to buy gifts. There can be a very large financial burden on people. And so we wanted to focus on how to live more generously this year and how to um, specifically this month really dive into that topic. Exactly. And so, you know, we kind of came up with three things, four things that we can share with you about living generously. And the first thing was what? Yes. So number one is be intentional. Right. So here, here's the thing about being intentional. Um, you know, I, I think about the use of the word intentional. Intentional means on purpose. Uh, in football, they have intentional grounding, which means the quarterback threw it away on purpose and did it, you know, not pass the line of scrimmage, whatever. It's a big penalty. They, they intentionally threw it to that spot where there was no one, not even <laughs> their own receiver, and they did it to avoid getting sacked. So the bottom line is the same is true with anything in life, that if you're intentional with something, that action will probably take place, whatever you're intentional with. And so I encourage you when you think about living generously is to put giving into your two most important budgets um, in your financial budget and into your time budget. Mm -hmm. And so what is a, what is a financial budget? Well, we have a lot of budget templates free on our website. We I was do. broke. Now I'm not.com. They'll be linked mm -hmm. in the show notes, but there's another word for our time budget. What's that called? Do you know what that other time budget, another word we would call that? time budget yeah how you spend your day i don't yeah. know <laughs> that's good huh. i would call it your calendar oh yeah and you know uh, so how do you have a calendar like how do you run your calendar is it the old analog pencil on a big giant calendar on the counter or do you have it on your google calendar or iCal on your phone we do google calendar okay and so that's really important because that really people refer to it as a time budget <laughs> But there's nothing like your calendar to prove to you that you have a certain amount of time. And while you, we can all have different dollars, we all have the same amount of time. And so I encourage you to put giving into that financial budget, but also in your time budget, also known as your calendar. So put in giving away of your time and giving away of your dollars. Because those who plan their time and dollars, they tend to accomplish far more than those who just wing it. Yeah. Those who just fly by the seat of their pants, so to speak, and just say, well, I hope so. They, those who live intentionally with their budgeted money and with their budgeted time seem to get a lot more done. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. And I, I mean, like you said, I think it applies to every area. So it's like, I think with being intentional, you can also add being disciplined. So you have to be disciplined to set the time for your money, but also for your time. Um, and you have to be disciplined to like actually do it when it goes off on your calendar, you have to be disciplined. Oh. So it's like, you're intentional about putting it on your time on your calendar, but you also have to be intentional and disciplined about actually doing it. Are you speaking it. to me about my calendar and how things <laughs> constantly move around and get pushed you know, back and fall off the calendar? My husband looks at my calendar all the time and he gets so overwhelmed because, so in our office we have like 18 calendars for all of the businesses, all the different things that are going on, everything. And so they all show up on my calendar because I, I like, I need to know what's going on in the business too. Like I need to know what meeting's supposed to be at and what's happening and when you're gone and when you're here and which is not, you're gone a lot. And so he looks at my calendar all the time and he's like, how do you read this? Because they're all different colors and they all show up at the same time. And It'd I'm like. It'd be hard if you're colorblind. Yeah, but it, it would. Thank God both of us are not colorblind. But I just know. I know like this color is Joe. This color is our personal calendar. This color is this. This color is Enjoy. This color is I was broke. This color. You know, like you just. It just I just learned So it. the mean trick would it be if somebody came in and changed the colors on your calendars? I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay. Something to think about <laughs> to do on April Fool's Day for you. <laughs> Okay, so that really leads us to our second point, uh, being intentional. So let's kind of break it apart. What's the first one? Or I guess it's number two, mm -hmm. but it's... Yep, so put time on the calendar. So what, do you, what does that mean? If you're planning to get around to doing it, or you would like to find time to be a part of that, or you find yourself saying, you know, I wish I could, you'll always face challenges in actually doing it. And so, as I mentioned, I have a team of people who help me manage my calendar, Whitney, uh, and as you can imagine, it's loaded with writing, Zoom and phone conversations, planning meetings with the team, coaching for fully funded life members, mm -hmm. uh, and other leadership tasks. But 
what gets on the counter and stays on the counter, and as you said, actually gets done on the counter, well, that's ultimately up to me. And if I'm not happy with my counter, you move well, it. that's one person's fault. <laughs> Megan's. No, it's <laughs> my fault. So the same is true for you, right, Megan? Yep. So the same is true for all of our podcast friends. Mm -hmm. So we prepare this podcast and we distribute it for zero cost to everybody for free. Aren't we benevolent? Isn't that awesome? We're so generous. Yeah. That only happens because Megan and I choose to live generously with our time and our calendar. So rattle off all the different meetings we have to help make sure a podcast happens every single week for 179 yep. times. So we have podcast planning meetings, podcast episode writing, podcast pre-production setup, podcast recording and production, podcast post edit, and podcast distribution. So all those things happen. So planning meetings, what are we going to talk about in the next year? That's a lot of feedback we hear. It's things that we see happening. Um, and then, of course, there's all this writing that we write these things. So we're not just winging it because <laughs> we feel like it's a lot better if we thought about what we're going to say. Uh, and then pre-production setup, you know, I'm looking around this room right now and I'm going to take a picture of it. Maybe we can include a, a link of it here, uh, in this episode, but I'm going to take a picture of what it looks like here. I'm going to back up and you can see, uh, how many, we got two microphones, we got four lights, we got two cameras, we got some sort of TV, mm -hmm. we got two people in here, got a computer and we got a countdown clock and then we got a set. I mean, it's all set up, and then we record this thing, and and then it's got to be post-edited mm -hmm. and then distributed. And why does that happen? Because it just magically happens, and we take a nap, and it just happens? No. Why does it happen? It's because one we're, word. We're intentional. We are intentional. Now, I also intentionally devote time to our local troop in the Boy Scouts of America, which I've mentioned several times, <laughs> of which... I have hold your hold it just don't please sit down. I don't want you to fall out because you're just so overwhelmed. I am the committee chair person for our local troop. And we meet every single Tuesday. Does your title change every time? It's changed several times okay. already. I've went from parent to volunteer to assistant scoutmaster to committee chair. That's what happens. You keep showing up, you're gonna eventually uh -huh. get named everything. So every Tuesday I'm there and every third weekend of the month we go on camping. So Today, we're recording this, uh, and it's a Friday. We're recording this for you guys, and I'm headed to camp in a tent outdoors. It was 26 degrees this morning. I was say, it was chilly I'm this morning. I have my mummy sleeping bag with me. Does Keaton have a good sleeping bag, too? Yes, he does. He has a mummy sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do not know the joys of a mummy sleeping bag. It like goes over your head. Oh, it goes over your head, and it's good down to like zero degrees. Some of them are good down to negative 20. Oh my goodness. And let me tell you, I used to just be terrified about camping in freezing temperatures because yeah. I'm going to go off the rails for a second. Um, <laughs> I went camping this one time in 2006. I just, <laughs> I, I, I got I love that to, you remember the year. This hunt camp, and... <laughs> I'm at this hunt camp and we're all camping outside. I'm from Indiana. All these South Carolina boys are there. And, you know, I'm the northern boy. I know how to take cold weather. I deal with cold weather. I've grown up with cold weather, snow, and all this terrible weather that happens very rarely here. And we have this beautiful campfire. It was awesome. And then we go to bed. We had no idea. None of us had looked at the weather. I don't oh, think no. the iPhones definitely weren't out yet. We all had flip phones. I remember this. And... I woke up at 1 a.m. so freezing cold. It was miserable. Why? Because I had one of those fair weather sleeping bags. Mm -hmm. Good for like 60 degrees. And so I, I literally tried to, I'm like, I'm from the north. I can deal with this. I'm not giving in. And I finally just got out and got in my truck mm. and fired it up and heated it up for a little bit and slept in my truck. So... I, I discovered the joy of a mummy sleeping bag, yeah. which is awesome. So I went camping one time. Yeah. One time was enough. It sounds final. It was final for me, which is unfortunate for my husband because he loves camping. And I had the same thing happen. I did not know that you needed a hardcore sleeping bag and it snowed Ooh. and it was freezing. And there was like four of us girls and four boys and all the girls were like, can we leave? And the boys wanted to stay. And so we all four ended up in the car sleeping but it was the most miserable night because none of us had sleeping bags that were right and it was freezing you know what it did though it made a lifetime memory 
Look at it. If it I was did. nice and you would have slept well, you would have never remembered it. But because it was miserable, you made a lifetime. And memory. my poor husband, I'll never go camping with him. Yeah. <laughs> so it's his fault. I like it. So <laughs> Megan, how do you ensure you are intentional with giving your time? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all about what you prioritize in this season, um, specifically, but and then overall. So if we're not prioritizing being generous and we're not prioritizing being intentional with our time and our money, then it's just not going to happen. And so are, you know, are we taking the time to sit down one-on-one as husband and wife and think about, you know, the way that we want to be generous, the organizations we want to give to, um, where we want to spend our time. You know, we've been talking about, uh, trying to find an organization that me and Jordan and Logan can all volunteer at together, Mm. like how we can do that. You know, is there some kind of like children's home we can go to, or is there like, uh, you know, my husband volunteers, at this place called the lot project in in Anderson and they like help get food and clothing to homeless people. And so he volunteers a lot. So Logan's been asking a lot of questions about why is daddy doing that? What is that? And so talking about that with him and just finding ways that our whole family can be involved and like prioritizing as like, as believers, we want to be generous and as believers, we want to help other people and other people don't have a lot of like, they're not, maybe they don't have money to be able to buy clothes or buy food. So we want to be able to help, you know? And so we're doing, like a food drive at our church. So we put, you know, food together so that families have food for the holidays and different things like that, that we're like trying to find ways to bring our family in it to where it's not just me and Jordan. That's good. And we leave Logan at home. And that's what happens as you expand as a family. That's awesome. And of course you guys are very intentional giving your time. You, you don't, it's not like an every week thing, like the Boy Scouts for me, but for you guys, it's like the summer camp that mm-hmm. you volunteer at, yep. which runs through nearly 6,000 campers, and then winter conference that mm-hmm. you help with yep. around Martin Luther King Day weekend. Yeah. So it's like compressed periods of volunteering of your time. And I think that's important for our podcast listeners to hear, that it could be compressed moments of time or it could be something on a regular mm-hmm. time interval. Uh, but just be intentional with putting it on the calendar that you're going to give of your time. And then we talked about the other one, which is what? Yep, so number three is put dollars in the budget. Yeah, so we're talking about being intentional with your time budget, the calendar, and being intentional with your financial budget. And so, you know, they're giving dollars. I, and you've heard me mention this in several episodes of the podcast where Jenny and I put giving dollars in our budget every month at the very top. If you look at our budget templates, giving is the first thing on the budget. And so we put giving to our church, uh, you know, giving to the Lord through our local church, the tithe. And then we put another one in there called Intentionally Bless Others. And you've heard some of these stories, but, you know, we've been able to use these dollars for uh, bringing our kids into it. We, the, the Intentionally Bless Others, the IBO, we call it Intentionally Bless Others. We pull that out in cash. So when we see a need, we can just give to them. And so uh, one, one Christmas, my daughter, we saw a family that was in need, and we were able to give them a $50 bill for, for Christmas. Uh, another time her friend wanted and needed shoes, but wanted some chucks. She was able to buy her some chucks and another set of shoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the homeless person ran a ton of people who say they're homeless with a sign on the side of the street. We've been able to give money to, uh, we've been able to send money to friends and family had a special opportunity in front of them Mm -hmm. or need. And what I find is, you know, the hack, if you Mm -hmm. want to, so to, so to speak, it's a hack. That's the, that's the phrase all the millennials use. Uh, since you are a millennial, apparently, on the I think you were like the first year or second year millennials yeah, allegedly. I'm, we're different. Okay, so having the dollars pulled out in cash, this is the hack. Pulling it out in cash allows you to be intentionally, spontaneously generous. Mm-hmm. Now that's a lot of it's long a lot of words, words. Uh, but I like it because spontaneous means feels like it's not intentional. Mm-hmm. But if you've got the money there and that's what it's there for, you may not know exactly where you're going to give it, mm-hmm. but you've already made the decision. I'm giving this away. Yeah. So it allows you to be spontaneous with it. So I want to say it again, just cause it's fun to say, <laughs> it allows you to be intentionally, spontaneously generous. And I like a good acronym. So let's make one up here. We can call that being ISG intentionally, yeah. spontaneously generous. I think another way you could do it too would, um, you know, in the holiday season, there are a lot of, a lot of homeless people that stand on the side of the street with signs. Um, and you know, I had some friends and they would pack bags and put it in their trunk of like canned goods or just like non-perishable food items, toothpaste, toothbrush, like shampoo, like that kind of stuff. And then when they saw somebody, instead of giving them cash, they would give them this bag of food and supplies and that kind of stuff to say like, 
just another way to bless them versus like, like just hand. Some people just don't like handing cash out because you just, like I said before, you just never know. But you never know, and it's it's in their hands then. But if you wanted another way, that could be an opportunity That's a too. Great idea, of packing actually. up a bag, you know, Aldi has like those nice um, canvas bags. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reusable the bags. The reusable bags, yeah. So yeah. you could use something you like buy that. buy them for like a dollar or two yeah. dollars. Yeah, but you could even go like, you get some food at Aldi or you could go to the dollar store and get some like supplies like that where it could help them in more ways than just giving them money, you know, other other. If you give avenues. them canned goods, do you give them a can opener? I don't, thing? see, I don't, I, I don't know. I hope it has the pull tab on the top. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You have to think through things see, like I'm that. See, I'm thinking through stuff. Yes. This is awesome. I like your idea though. It's an excellent idea. And so also, you know, as you do, as we do, uh, there's giving dollars we put in the monthly budget, you know, once a year for like birthdays, anniversaries, other special days, organizations we want to support. And, and that's just, that's giving dollars that we put in there once a year. They show up in the monthly budget, in the month they're going to happen. But there's also giving dollars we put in our monthly budget, you know, just one time ever, you know, for a wedding, for special events. And, you know, I, I think it would be great to be able to wrap this up with this great passage of Scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 14. And it's Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and he's actually writing about giving uh, from a church that had some resources to another area that was very poverty-stricken. And he says this to them. He says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about an agricultural principle related to giving. Mm -hmm. And so I would just ask our podcast listeners, are you sowing sparingly? Or are you sowing generously? Or are you sowing at all? Mm -hmm. Because in proportion to how you sow is how you will reap. And as he continues, says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves what type of giver? Cheerful. Cheerful. Mm -hmm. Cheerful, cheerful smile, everybody smile. And God is able, and, and when I preach this, I get all fired up. I'm getting fired up right now where it says, and God is able. <laughs> it, because those four words is really important. Yes. God, and God is able. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, there are people who listen to this podcast who, who they want to believe that they could have financial progress. They want to believe they could get control of their life's calendar, but circumstances are out of whack and money is definitely out of whack. And they need to hear this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening that God is able. Yeah, that's good. And, and, it, and he says, and God is able to do what? To bless you abundantly. And I love he repeats this word all a lot. Mm -hmm. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As mm -hmm. it's written, they have freely scattered the gifts to the poor their righteousness endures forever. And, and then he talks about how the Lord provides. He says, now he who supplied seed to the sower and bread for food will also, watch this, this is a promise, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can buy a four-wheeler. <laughs> is that what it said? I don't know. It no, didn't say that? No. Well, it says you will be enriched every way so that you can buy a uh, a baby buggy for two babies. <laughs> Is that right? Maybe. Yep. The one with power drive, electric drive, remote control. Do they have those? I'm sure they do. <laughs> um, no, you'll be enriched in every way so that you can be what? Generous. Generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to us. No. It results in thanksgiving to whom? To God. To God. So really, he, he's, explain, he's going to finish by explaining what that means. That generosity, it blesses, it honors the Lord, it blesses other people, and it positions us for blessing. And he talks about why when you li give, live generously and why you, when you do so cheerfully, mm -hmm. um, what happens, you know, why do they, why does it result in thanksgiving to God? Well, he says in verse 12, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is an overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So when you give, it is overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God who provided it in the first place. So verse 13, because of the service by which you proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace 
God has given you. I really love that passage of scripture. You want to get fired up, read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 today. It will help you live more generously. Yeah, that's awesome. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about next episode. Yes. So next we're going to talk about how to negotiate a deal. So you might be thinking, didn't we talk about that? No. We talked about how to find a deal. So in this episode, we're going to talk about how to negotiate a deal. So if you feel like you get run over whenever you're buying stuff where the price is negotiable, so maybe buying a car, buying a home, or even a yard sale, we want to give you some tips to help you save money in this process. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to talk about that. Hey, if you like today's episode, help us get this podcast so other people can benefit. The greatest thing that you could do is provide a link to it in your social media platform. That'd be the greatest thing that you could do. You could go to the I Was Broke Now I'm Not Facebook page or the, and like it. And every single Monday we post a link to the podcast, a link to the YouTube video. If you're watching on YouTube, thumbs up it, subscribe, and get that little bell there if you want to be notified every single time on a Monday when a new episode shows up. And as Megan mentioned, if you've implemented one of our tips, share your success stories with us by emailing it to us at info, that is info, at IWBNIN.com or send it to us on one of our many social media platforms. Any last words you want to share today? I mean, we'd love to hear how you guys are being generous in this season, ways that you found for you, ways you found for your family, ways that work for you guys, or maybe it's a new hack that you guys have. We'd love to hear about it. Awesome. Have a great Monday, everybody. Get fired up. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.